we're in the age of learning and being able to learn and inspire learning and and be ambitious for learners those are the precious things in the 21st century it's not just kids i mean look at the way that pensioners have reinvented the extended family through through email through texting i mean the most dangerous thing in london here is a, a middle-aged man texting on the pavement because they're just kind of walking blind you know <laughs> but they're all doing it you know so this isn't just a kids revolution this is actually for me it's a learning revolution you know we're in the learning age and I think people, people used to say we're in the information age. Tosh, you know, information is a free good. I was walking past um, BC World the other day and they were selling Encyclopedia Britannica for 99p and nobody was buying it because <laughs> you know, it was too much money. <laughs> and just the carrying it home was too much hassle. Why would you need it? You've got, you've got good, good stuff on Google already. You know. I was at a school the other day, they, they were bored to tears with assemblies, I mean, not so many, you know, start the day with a ritual act of, of joint humiliation, why would you do that, you know, so they said, stop, no more assemblies, instead, uh, they set up a school media group, and the head teacher makes an appointment with the children, they interview her, if she's got anything to say, they go out and they film the, uh, you know, the netball group, with their successes, the rugby group with theirs, a little bit of the, uh, the autumn drama, put it all together, and each week, they put the whole thing together, park it on YouTube and tell everybody where it is. And the parents are now watching the weekly assembly and learning about the school in a way that would never have happened before. So each time the cycle goes through this, is it content, is it people? Of course it's people, but each time the people get bit gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, of course, out in Philadelphia last week, blow me down, I find people in the school in Philadelphia watching the assembly from the school in Haverhill because they've seen it on YouTube and think it's cool. You know. Um, the exam system can move forward. There are, around the world, there are some really exciting exams that really that embrace a broader definition of literacy, that have collaborative endeavour, that have ingenuity and imagination at the heart of them. Uh, the RSA curriculum in London, for, for example, and I've seen some stunning work in, in Scottish schools that it fits within the curriculum and maps onto an assessment. So it's not assessment's fault. It's certainly not teachers. Uh, I've seen teachers, when you tell them they can, they're full of extraordinary imagination. You stand on the roof of a school and say, where else is there a collection of graduate level people reflecting day to day on how they might do something better? I mean, the, the, the only other place you'll see that kind of intellectual powerhouse will be another school. Every school is unique. Every culture is unique. Every context is unique. There are no two schools alike on the planet. You know? um, so they're all about grazing bits and pieces that work you know, from Gardner, from De Bono, from the literature, but mostly from each other. Uh, you know, you won't find the great insights in academic papers anymore. You won't find the wisdom in journals anymore. You'll find the wisdom in other schools. Schools are our research centres, and the quicker that's acknowledged, the better, I think.